this. <clears throat> it says, um, and this is something we covered last week, y'all. Be ye angry and saying not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give, neither, I'm sorry, give place to the devil. And I'm going to just retouch that again. Understanding that when you are angry or when you are upset, you give Satan a seat. You allow him to penetrate you, your mind. Let me say it like that. You allow Satan to penetrate your heart or your mind to allow you to think things or act upon things that you may not should be doing. Like, uh, and when you upset, and I don't know about y'all, but when you upset, Everything that, that could go wrong in your mind usually goes wrong. Like you start thinking on things and maybe I should have done this or I can't believe this person did that and they got the audacity and then you start thinking about what happened last week, the week before last and what about these past six months you've really been playing with me. All of this stuff crosses your mind and what God is saying, you just gave Satan a seat. You allow him to sit comfortably with you to penetrate your mind to cause you to do something you probably shouldn't. Like, this is critical for us as saints, y'all, as uh, people that are trying to uh, really live for God. 28, and I just touched it again because I know we talked about it last week. Let him that still, that stole still no more, but rather let him labor working with his hands that thing which is good that he may have that he may have to give to him that need it. And that's God showing us the ability to give grace and mercy to people to the exact same way he gave to us. When he says, let him that steal, steal no more. So it's like you once stole. Now you, you don't steal anymore. But because you know what it was like or whatever reason you had in your mind to steal, you have compassion to be able to help the next person. Right? That's exactly what it is. And I'm going to get to something in this study, y'all, as we continue to read this. Let no, corru no, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Do you know in order to successfully carry this out, you got to think before you open your mouth every time? You got to think. And, and, and what I'm saying is because sometimes we like to joke and it's vulgarly, which is not of God. Right. We tend to say things that's offensive. You know what I'm saying? And I know sometimes we get caught up in the moment. I, I'm not saying that it don't happen because sometimes you can just be joking and laughing and you love the person. Y'all extremely comfortable with each other. And you might say something fly that you shouldn't say. And what God is saying right here, he says, let no, not just a little. He said, no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. And y'all know, boy, when, and it goes back to the, the uh, scripture about uh, be angry, but sin, not letting out the sun go down on your wrath. You know, when you upset, you can say some fly stuff, boy. When we upset, we can say some fly stuff. That's usually when you have the boldness to say whatever you want to say. When you mad, I'm going to really let you know what's going on, what's on my mind. And, you know, I done seen people say, I, I was sparing you. You finna get it now. Yeah, see, I was trying to hold my peace, but since you want to take it there, and they just start spewing off and letting you know. Like, just saying all type of evil things towards you. And don't get me wrong, I'm going to tell you how Satan do. Sometimes, even when it's evil, we feel like the person needs to hear it. You need to know the truth. Right? That's what we do. And I understand. I have compassion for that. But what God wants us to understand, too, there's always room for communication. When he said, let no, you can have a, 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 a mature adult conversation, or you should be able to, to anybody, especially within the body, if we say we all believe. We should be able to have a conversation amongst each other without nobody getting offended, especially if it's something that needs to be brought to the table. Because let me tell y'all, sometimes people can point things out in you you don't see. And instead of being offensive or uh, taking the road of, oh, you just don't like me, evaluate it. Hold on, okay. I ain't never think about that. Let me check. Let me make sure I'm, you know, you, you be extra careful. Go ahead. You know, that, that's good, too what you were saying about somebody could be, and it could be somebody that's not even in the body, 
that could tell you something about yourself. You know what I'm saying? But you just gotta have the ears to listen to them. It's like I had an incident where we're out here talking about like a flat tire on the trailer. Mm -hmm. Now, they explained it to me. Uh, okay, then, well, this is what you could have did better right here or whatever, so, so, so on and so forth. The thing is, I have to be careful not getting in my own way because the enemy used tactics with me like, uh, well, you must, this must be a rookie mistake. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You hear a little something like that right there. I heard that right there. Now, nah, this is what I'm saying. I find myself getting a little, you know what I'm saying, agitated. up there. Mm. Like I'm agitated in a way. Yeah. The look now, nah, I've been I've been doing this for four years and I was right here. Right here. This is what I'm just saying. I might not be meaning it that way, but your eat your good can be evil spoken of because mm. I wasn't really trying to put it out there like that. Right. But we're out there, they out there telling me something now. That the enemy has allowed me to feel that way. Now I have selective listening. Now, you know what I'm saying. I'm not listening to them correct because they could be, they could very well be right about what they saying. Mm -hmm. But God would allow me to go through that situation to show me myself. <clears throat> and what I found in there is I had a little. That's a little pride mm -hmm. in me that it, it caused me to, it caused me to cry a little bit because I said you have you know be real with yourself. Let me go back and check myself and see, is that something, the root of the problem? Because mm -hmm. that stuff just comes from childhood. You feeling like you need to be validated. And the enemy will use tactics like that on me because I'm so used to arguing with two sisters. And the whole time, two girls that they probably, oh, Johnny, you don't know, you don't know. I'm always telling them I'm wrong when I know I'm right. See how that came out? Now, this is what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And that, was, that little spirit in you, the devil knows that and he'll use that. But we got to be willing to listen to people. But first, we got to examine ourselves and just look and see, is that really the problem? And that Amen. was a hard thing for me to do. That would brought it from here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just to see. No, that's good. You're right. And that's why it's so important to uh, evaluate like the things that you say, regardless of how you feel. Because God is admonishing us right now. We have to consider those that are listening. We have to consider those that are hearing what we say, because he said, let no corrupt communication come up out of your mouth, proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And I'm going to tell y'all, I don't know if any of y'all ever experienced this, but <clears throat> you have a, or you may even have somebody in your life like this right now or somebody that. When they presence all around, like you like when they all around because they always got like good wholesome words or uh, soft spoken, where nice, polite, gentle. You know what I'm saying? Like you have some people that can be around or can be in the atmosphere, and because of the way they speak or talk, it always lighten the room up. Or <clears throat> you know, it, it just it's, it's always good for the the what they call it, the vibe or the energy in the room. What did you say, Javo? The ambiance, yes. If y'all know Javo, he got some words. The ambiance. Somebody look it up. Google it. Ambiance. <laughs> if how you spell it first, that was somebody saying. <laughs> no, nah, but he right though. Seriously, man. Like you have those that's around or that that may be a part of your life, and it's like, man, I like when such and such come around. Because he or she always got something good to say, or we laugh on a joking, and I'm talking about wholesome laughing, not that vulgar stuff. I'm saying we can talk, laugh, or enjoy each other. Like you have those type of people. You want to be those type of people. You don't want somebody that, because I'm going to tell you what else you got. You got those that come around, and you know, people say, oh, here comes such and such. She always negative. Or he always got something negative to say, right? Like it's always something. You don't want to be that person. Because you can, you can dim the light in that room. I'm telling you. Just have air. I've seen where the wrong person come around. If they're around long enough, now everybody in the room got an attitude. Because it done, that spirit done shifted. Shape shifted, as they say. Because now it's in everybody. All, everybody look alike. Even though they all different. Because that particular attitude or those words is just spreading around. We don't want to be those people, y'all. And sometimes... You just may be that person. Don't ever take for granted, even if you delight. When it comes to speaking the words. And what I mean by that is, sometimes I know it. You feel like 
give me the words of encouragement. Or I, I want to just come sit and not always try to uh, scan the room and be the positive one. Man, that's a blessing. That's a blessing, y'all. And I'm going to get to something on, on why uh, that is. But watch this. Verse 30, I love this. It says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let me show y'all, of course, in light of the subject of the month, New Year, New Me. When we were uh, our old selves, right, or as we still trying to overcome our old selves, the Holy Spirit was, no part of, was not part of us in the sense of directing us and guiding us or us really having a relationship with it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Because I'm going to show y'all what this grieve mean right quick. It says to distress, reflexively or passively, to be sad, cause grief or to be in heaviness. It's like this. Y'all know what that's like. You ever grieved your parents? You ever grieved your, uh, your spouse? Right? You ever grieved your brothers, your friends? Like it's, 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 he it's like, man, what's like you vexing me? Why? And how do you grieve somebody or vex when you do things that they don't like or you do things, especially when you know they don't like them? It's like, uh, how can I grieve my, my wife? There'll be things. Some, let me tell you what she did to me this past. But I don't know if it grieved her, but man, she took a picture. It was like five water bottles on my nightstand. And she took a picture of it and sent it to me. And I'm like, ain't no way to mind my bottles. <laughs> now I'm saying that because this, you won't be understanding uh, what you be done done. But the other person see it. And guess what she say? Well, a little smart mouth self. I, I say, ain't no way them all five of them all in my body. She said, you're right. I missed two. They was in the closet. <laughs> so I'm like, dang. But what it does for me now, I'm going to be conscious of my water bottles, right? I always keep at least one on the nightstand because, you know, you might wake up in the middle of the night or before you go to bed, throw it a little dry, throw back some water. So now it's going to cause me to be like, man, let me make sure I ain't got it. no more than two because she's going to take a picture and send it to me. But um, that may be something that vexes her grief. Or if she say, hey, can you please just throw your water bottles, your water bottles away? Okay, baby. And then let's just say I don't. Now she come back, it's eight. That's vexing to her because she's like, you already know how I feel about this. Right, or if I'm uh, uh, just leave my clothes in the, the middle of the, the room, or I know she got this thing about leaving doors open. So every time I come out the closet, I make sure I close the door because I know she don't want to look and see the closet door wide open, right? So that stuff can grieve her. Like all of this stuff happens in your life that causes grief. How do you grieve the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is in tune with God. The Holy Spirit is the one that's directing you to do the things God expects of you. Imagine you got somebody there talking to you. It's like even um, y'all ever went to restaurants with uh, some of y'all know your spouses. And you're like, look, baby, don't, don't get the clown in when we get in here. Be OK. To, listen, let the waiter or waitress do her job. Because y'all know some folks, is, you know, uh, it ain't never sweet enough uh, you know, it ain't seasoned enough. Like, you have those people. And you be, I be seeing some of the folks in the restaurant, they just be like this. Oh, my God. Every time I come eat with this boy, it's something. It's vexing. And God, y'all, with the Holy Spirit, God be done trained us and taught us what it is he expects of us. This is how you become a different version of yourself. Right. This is how you you become the person God wants you to be. So when 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 the Holy Spirit tells you to watch your mouth and you constantly. Going off, what you think you are grieving the Holy Spirit, you vexing the Holy Spirit. And y'all know that's frustrating because you can only vex something for so long. And then they ready to you, you, vex your spouse long enough. Guess what? They ready to serve you with some papers. No, it's the truth. Right. Go ahead. Man, it, you know what that brings to mind what you just saying that it's been, and I said I said this personally. There's been points to where there's one thing being in tune with the Spirit of God. When the Spirit is trying to stop you from doing something that you know you are not to be doing, right? And you go ahead and do it. If you're in tune with God, you can hear the vexing in the Spirit. You're like, man, you know she did that. 
And then I, I, for me, immediately after I've done what I know I should not have done, I feel bad, but I understand the spirit. I can hear the spirit speaking to me like, man, and it's crazy. It's gonna sound stupid, but I, I hear stuff like, man, I'll kill you right now for what you just did, stuff like that. Mm. And it's I, like, and I know, I, so I, sometimes I know that's just me. Yeah, that just spirit. yeah. But it's just that's one of the things that I'm gonna read in the spirit. When you do stuff that you know you ought not to be doing, if you're in tune with God in the spirit, you can hear when you're reading the spirit. Amen. And uh, and and one of those words in that uh, word study, y'all, was sad to make sad. And y'all know the Bible say in Genesis, God said His spirit will not always strive with mankind, right? So when you even when you talk about making sad, how many of us purposely want to always make our spouse sad or our parents sad? Or you know, when, you know, you got some parents they know how they raised you, they know the 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 code of ethics or the moral standard they established in you when you was young, right? And you grow up and you don't show none of that. Integrity just out the window. And your mom or your dad says, I didn't raise you like that. Boy, what's wrong with you? And you and you know I've seen parents, God, I done done all I can. You're gonna have to help me. Making your parents sad or you making your spouse sad, they saying the same thing. Baby, what have I not done to continue to encourage you or to show you uh, what needs to happen to make this work and you constantly going against the grain and you making them sad sooner or later they're going to like man I can't do this I can't deal with this and the Bible is saying right now we should not grieve and I'm going to tell you you can grieve two people either the Holy Spirit or yourself if you grieve in yourself then you in tune with God and what I mean by that is because everything that we was made up of from the beginning was designed to go against God. This is why the Bible say it's impossible for the flesh to please God. Impossible. Sometimes we be thinking we still can with the flesh, right? I'm just saying that's how deceit for the heart is, though. You think, yeah, I know I'm fleshly, but God and God is saying, no, you have to be in tune with my Holy Spirit in order to please me. Which goes against you a lot of the times. Go ahead, Deke. And yeah, that's that's exactly what it is. Like you, uh, like you said, you you are pleasing yourself, and 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 it's like when you think sometimes, like you said, like when you're pleasing yourself, you think you're in tune with God, but but like you know, we we supposed to die daily. Yes. Right. And so it's like it depends on what it is. You know, like if you. If, if it's not uh, in a in a situation where you're supposed to humble yourself, mm -hmm. but you are making yourself feel good, like you say, then yeah, it's you know you are not in one with with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Absolutely. And the Bible is encourages us not not to grieve it. Right? It says whereby you you are sealed until the day of redemption. Look at verse thirty one. Let all bitterness and wrath. This one is touching for us because I'm going to show y'all why. It says, all bitterness, all wrath, and anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you. Now, we know the Bible say be angry, but sin not. But in this particular scripture, the Bible say what? It's the same chapter. It says, let all wrath. And anger, because y'all know the Bible say the wrath of man working not the righteousness of God. What is he saying? The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. In other words, when you mad and you feel like there's some, there's some punishment you need to carry out, that's not of God. And we all have that in us somewhere. Like you feel, I'm gonna teach you a lesson. You know, we got that. I'm gonna teach you a lesson in us. And God is saying that ain't of me. You have to line your wrath up with God's wrath. And when you do that, you allow him to do it. And I know that's tough, y'all, because people be trying to play on you, right? You feel like folks take your kindness for weakness. Or they really, you know, <laughs> boy, say it be staring you up because you're saying you really don't know who you're talking to. Like, you don't know who you're really dealing with. Because folks will push that button, keep pushing it, keep pushing it, especially when you have become a new person. That's what God is saying. They keep pushing it, and you're saying, you really don't know who you're dealing with. Go ahead. I think me and, me and mom was having a conversation about that on the phone the other day, like, 
uh, I was just letting her in, like, you know, my mom, uh, she was like, what's wrong with you today? I was like, well, I probably was thinking about something. You know how you thinking about something at the time? And I probably came off a little different to her. Like, now nah, mm-hmm. it was just some things on my mind. And then she was like, uh, you know, when you just start to be completely, when you completely sold out, and all right there. I heard what she was saying, but I was like, mom, the thing is, I am sold out. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. It hurt. I, well, when I talk about y'all probably hear me on Bible study say, it's hard to please God. It's hard. Like, that's because I am sold out. I can't really do me. It's hurting that I can't really just do what I want to do. Mm-hmm. I got to do his way and not my way because it's against my nature. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? To just, I want to go and do me sometimes. Sometimes I want to say what I want to say and I can't say everything I want to say. All that hurts. But boy, what it does is it helps me though because I start to deal with the inside of me. The mm-hmm. root of the problem. Mm-hmm. All that stuff just comes from deep down when I was a child. And I realized these things like, man, that that other person wants to come out that's been doing it for so long, but I can't do that because it's killing me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I got to die to myself, and that's what hurts so much. Mm-hmm. But, boy, it does bring joy when you can, you know what I'm saying, over, it, it overcomes something in you. Yes. When you can deal with yourself and your problems, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying, and just admit it to yourself, like, man, you know what? Yeah, something is a little wrong. Well, let me let me allow the Lord to work on me a little more in that area. And I be admitting to God that something is wrong with me. Amen. I ain't why I thought I was. That's good. And that's good, Brother Johnny. Y'all touched clamor, because I want to show you. It says I ain't clamor, y'all see what it says, to moat or uh grief. Told you not to grieve the Holy Spirit. And then it talks about letting grief be put, put away from you. But let me show you what God is talking about. That tumult means like a loud noise or shout. And it talks about, let me show y'all. Y'all see what it said, that clamor or crying? So let's make it make sense. You ever got so mad? Now here come them tears. And you burst out like you, you that rage comes out and like, Grief, like crying and shouting and yelling. I'm sick of you. I'm top deck. I'm talking about. God is saying, put that away from you. I'm going to tell y'all why this is critical. Because all of this come out when you got stuff bottled in. This is why it's important to have a relationship, the proper relationship with God. And don't misinterpret what I'm saying, y'all. It's okay to cry. When you were alone, like sometimes you have that one on one with God and you have to let uh, frustration out or um, uh, even anger or you just want to have a conversation with him. That's your daddy. You should be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. But what God is saying, you don't do that to your fellow brothers and sisters. You don't allow that to happen when you're dealing with people. Why? Because I'm going to tell you, when you're trying to die to self, when that happens, you give it life. It's like you waking up a monster again. So when you, and and I'm going to tell you how Satan will fool you. That'll happen and you'll feel good. Even though it was wrong and you acknowledge that it was wrong, in your mind you're saying, man, that had to come out. Thank you. I just had to get that out, God. But you just gave it life. You set yourself up for the next time. And what God is saying, y'all, listen. When you spend enough time with God by yourself, you're able to uh, have those moments to where you may have to cry. You may have to talk to him, pray, express yourself. But not when it comes to people because people are going to frustrate you for real. People are going to frustrate you. And I can imagine uh, when that clamor. Y'all remember what happened with Moses, right? When he smote the rock. And it's crazy because God instructed him to smote the rock prior, like before. But this particular time, in his anger, God asked him to speak to it. But he smote it anyway. And I'm just saying, if I was there, I can imagine the frustration in his voice or even how loud he was. You understand? Like, I can see just calling the people rebels and, man, I'm sick of y'all. Like, I could just see him saying that because they, but they vexed Moses to the max. Yeah, I can see. I'm sick of y'all think I'm sitting here drinking water. Look, look at my mouth. I'm thirsty too. And you want some of this water. I tell you what, fire. 
Water came out. God did what he was going to do. But Moses got in trouble. And what God is trying to let us know, y'all, we can be guilty of that same stuff. Because I'm going to tell you what starts to happen in us when we do everything right or we what we appear to be right. We feel like we obligated to be able to do that. Yeah. Like I've been holding my peace. I've been putting up with this from you and that from you. I'm sick of you. Like somebody owes you something. Yes. And it comes out. It comes out, y'all. And God is saying we got to be able to control that. Let that be away from you. He says uh, anger, clamor, evil speaking. He say, be put away from you with all malice. Look, what malice is, badness, malignity, right? Trouble. He say, let all of this be put away from you. This is the uh, process of you becoming the person God expects you to be. That way, when somebody see you, they can't even recognize you. Because they say, no, nah, that's a different individual right there. No, nah, because I'm going to tell y'all, a lot of times we set goals and aspirations even in the brand new year. Oh, this year, man, I'm head down, full focus. I'm going to get my business straight. you still the same person, though. Like, how you going to um, expound or grow when you still the same person internally? A lot of times we lack discipline in all areas of our lives, and that's why we can't prosper. Holy Spirit will give you discipline. The Holy Spirit will allow you to focus even on the things that that you should be focusing on. Don't mean just because you you uh, in tune with the spirit, you're going to be rich. Now, don't misinterpret what I'm saying, because most of y'all may be. Oh, yeah. Let me go and get right with God, because I'm trying to do two, three hundred thousand this year. No, that's not what I'm saying. But God puts you in line and in tune. And man, listen, that's why Paul say he learned to be content. Because he allowed the Holy Spirit to continue to lead him and guide him and put him in positions to do things that he that was necessary for him. Amen. But it says you put away all of this stuff in malice. And look, verse 32. And be ye kind one to another. Tender hearted, y'all. Listen. When I was doing this, let me tell you what stuck out to me. It says well compassioned. You got compassion. And you got well compassion. It's a difference. I'm going to tell y'all. And, and usually when you well compassion, people don't like you. And when, when, I, and when I say, well, I ain't going to say people don't like you. People don't like the way you handle things a lot of times when they are not that way. You know, you know that's when people come to you trying to talk to you about a problem. Well, this, this the well compassion. Well, you know, man, everybody different. Well, did you ask why? Well, I mean, she probably had a long day at work. You know, you, oh, he, I ain't come for you to side with them. I came for you to side with me. To understand, because a lot of people just be needing a, another yes in order to feel good in what they want to do. And if you don't give them that other yes, now you're the enemy too. When you well compassion, that's usually how it is. The Bible says, listen, well compassion and sympathetic. Pitiful. That's what tender hearted. He said, be ye kind one to another and welcome. Y'all, we got to stop casting judgment just based off of the way we see things. That's what God is saying. A lot, Y'all, this is one of the reasons why so many people leave the church right here. Because they don't have enough compassion. They're not tender hearted enough. You know, we got this thing to where the way we are made up or the way we see things in different aspects, we expect others to just be the same way. You know, I'm finna tell y'all, I'm gonna give you different struggles or strong like you got some dudes that refuse to put their hands on a woman. And I think every dude should be like that. Amen. But what I'm saying is to a guy that does, uh, should you not have compassion? And when I say compassion, I ain't telling you to say, man, you know, just go back home and try to get no girl, you better get up out of there. But I still, that don't mean I don't love him or don't want to talk to him and try to help encourage him. And I ain't shunning him. You understand what I'm saying? Because of what, because that may be a stronghold. I'm, y'all, generational curses are real. Yes, sir. You got a lot of men that put their hand on women because they saw their daddy beat their mom or put their hands on their mom or whatever. And it's like when you, when you can show a person love, that what they think is love, you got them. And influence them on pretty much anything you want them to do. If I show my son I really love him, 
Then I go around and, and put my hand on women and tell them, boy, that's how you get them in line. Listen, women like that. As from a young age, I'm probably going to believe that. No, I'm that's how y'all would be surprised how sick individuals are. But it's true. That's how it is. I'm telling you, that's how it is. It, that, it's not in every case, but that happens a lot. Go ahead. That's what they said in the show that um, if he do it the first time, he get the response he want. It builds up in his mind that that's what's, what's going to get every time I need it. If I do it the first time and she shut up or she, or she don't fight back and it gets her to calm her down from me, then it'll build up in their mind that maybe this is what I need to do from now on. Yeah. Amen. That, it happens. And that's why we got to be careful. Uh, and to not let our flesh control us in such a way. Man, and it, it's... Trying to circumcise her, like the Bible talks about pulling the foreskin off your heart. Like, that's a struggle for a lot of people, depending on what it is you may struggle. Because I'm going to tell you, a lot of times we don't have, we lack the compassion of people that have open struggles or open strongholds, but we got them privately. Right, right. Now, ain't no way. You, you know, somebody can be in here, like, prime examples, uh, I don't know, some people lack discipline just to sit in the audience and pay attention. They always got to get up and walk around. You, man, what you, what you doing? You... <laughs> that's, how, that's how we feel. Not, that should be order. Don't get me wrong. I'm not speaking that it shouldn't be order. But that's how I meant. But, but, you know, but you may be, every time you get a chance, when ain't nobody looking, you on their porn site. You know what I'm saying? And, and we openly talking. Hey, leave that alone. But every time, you're like, I know I'm supposed to, but man. And I'm going to tell you something. If, if that's something you struggle with, huh, social media will help you. Well, when I say help, well, not help you in a good way. Help you in a bad way. It's going to hurt you. Because you're going to be saying, I don't need to be sick. Oh, whoa. Stroll back up, stroll down, all of that. I'm just saying. The world will help you in that stronghold for it to get even stronger. That's why you got to be disciplined. That's why when the Bible talks about being tenderhearted, well compassion, y'all, we got to consider all things. We can't just be, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We can't be uh, hypocritical. We can't be biased to certain things. Like we can't, uh, because this one look, is not seen to the, to the eye. You know what I'm saying? I'm okay with this one, but the one that's seen to the eye, I got a problem with. You know, we shouldn't do that. Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> try to put my words right with it. But like you 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 kinda you, you gotta be understanding. Amen. Like, you know, to where like you were, you know, your your struggle may not be that, you know, but you may have a struggle with fighting, you know, or or whatever, you know, or or hitting somebody back because they hit you. You know, but but the thing is, like, understand, like, yeah, their, their their struggle is not the same as yours, but it's a struggle, mm -hmm. and and to and understand that that they have a struggle, and 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 to help them come out of how you may be coming out of yours or that came out of yours, in in the same way, and had that compassion for them on that. Amen. And y'all, we still even show compassion even when they show uh, resentment towards trying to get better. We just do it in a different way. Because I'm going to tell y'all another uh, struggle that can be for people. Some parents, y'all, that, what their stronghold is, over-loving their kids. And what I mean by that is, I know you probably say, ain't no such thing as over-loving. No, you, you, you look past too much. Or it's like parents lack the ability to discipline their kids because they don't want to hurt them. They see discipline as straight hurt. It's just, no, nah, I don't want to pop them. I don't want to pop her because that's my baby and I love him. And we saying if you don't grab that boy or that girl and put some on his butt, because that's how I am. But I can't look at that and be like, that. you a poor parent because you don't want to whoop them. You know what I'm saying? But I do need to, we need to have an understanding because the Bible say discipline your kids. Now, I'm not telling you that that's not that don't, kill don't yeah, but you need to the, don't spat a rod. Absolutely. So kids do need discipline. But as a brother or sister, you have compassion. You know, because sometimes we look at, you know what? Stop coming to church. Sure. Watch online. Now I'm telling you, 
That be some of the mindsets of people. Just watch it online, because you be distracting me while you're here. Shoot, going to whoop them kids. And the parents just may have a mindset of, I don't want to touch, I don't want to pop my baby because I don't want to see him or her cry. And, and some, and y'all, listen, I don't think we, I don't know if we really consider this, but I'm going to tell you what love allows you to do. You know what part of compassion is? Teaching. Think about what I said. Part of compassion or having compassion is teaching. Sis, come here. Let me, let, let's, let's, let's do a word. Let's, let's do a Bible study real quick. Let me show you what God says about chastisement or discipline. And this ain't got nothing to do. I'm just showing you that can not only help uh, the child, help you too, because some parents just don't know. And sometimes you have to teach them. Go ahead, D. Man, that's good uh, because uh, ain't love the same way. Like love is having compassion, right? Amen. So, so it's like even like when people say, or when you say like you don't love them, like love them is 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 maybe showing them a hard way of uh, getting through an obstacle or something. You yes. Know? Like, mm -hmm. like 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 you can't always take the easy way. Right. You know which the person on the other end would think that that's love. Yes. But like sometimes going through that thing, you know, it's really the love, you know, that's, that you really need at that time. Absolutely. Amen. And y'all, that's what we got to consider. Consider the ability to uh, help one another, teach one another, or instruct each other if we in error with compassion. Now, you, you don't know that? You ain't never been taught that? That ain't compassion. You gotta be careful what you gonna say, bro. I said, um, also too, it's about. Um, I said, I'll be personal. Some parents might have a childhood trauma that causes them not want to put their kids. That's true. Yeah. I'm glad I, you I, brought I, that I was, out. Was, That's I was true. I was living in a man that uh, mom was abusive, so it took me to learn that you can't actually whoop kids and not let your hurt. Cause you not to want to hurt. Amen. No, that's that's true. I had trauma too until I had kids, and I realized why well, I got whoopers. <laughs> Y'all know, man. No, for real. Cause let me tell you, when you when you when you growing up and you get whoopers and you get some good whoopers, what you start saying? I ain't gonna whoop my kids. Ain't no way. Ain't no way she loved me whooping me like that. Then when you get kids, you say, I see why my mom was tearing my butt up. Come here, I'm gonna tear your butt up. You find out, you realize. No, seriously. But but there are some excessively abusive stuff, and sometimes parents trying to whoop their kids to remind them of their childhood, like he said, y'all. But those are also teachable moments, right? Or coachable moments. Because I'm going to tell you one thing about the Holy Spirit. It can help you overcome anything. I don't care what your past was. I don't care what you was doing. God has a way to help you overcome that thing, y'all. And that's why he's God. We can't. We got to stop shortcutting God and thinking that this is just who I am and this is how I'm going to be. No, that means you don't fully trust God because he can help you. And like he says, y'all, he says, being tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, had forgiven you. And y'all, when you consider all the things God has done as far as forgiveness for you, man, we still in debt when it comes to forgiving other people. Right. We're still in debt, y'all. If we're going to be uh, uh, truthful. Here's another thing, y'all. This is 1 John chapter 3. Watch this. Um, I'm going to start at 8. 1 John chapter 3 says, He, talking about a new me, new year, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm of God. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned it from the beginning. So, is it fair to say if you sin, you have Satan? Is it fair to say that? Yeah. I'm saying, based on what we read, it, is it fair to say if you sin, you are of the devil? Yeah. Huh? I'm going to tell y'all it's important to do word study too. Listen. Uh, hold on, which word I'm looking for? This is... Uh, this is uh, this sin right here. He that committed sin. Let me see if it's in this word committed. Uh, it's talking about uh, to continue in. There it is. Not that you have sin, but you continue in sin. 
<laughs> no, I'm saying. We condemn people like that, and God tells us be careful with that too. Condemning folks. Yeah, but 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 here but here's the thing. We know what we just read though. So sometimes, just on the surface, like, hey, if you commit sin or you were Satan, but it's like, man, because I'm gonna tell y'all. I remember when I read, when I first read that, it kind of knocked me back because I'm saying, man, God, come on, like, hold on, what you mean commit sin? Do you forgive us? Like, what's up? You know, but when you understand, when you read it and you study it, what he say, he say, no, he that continue in sin. In other words, what God is saying, when you with me, sin bother you. You ain't, it's not something that you continually do because it bothers you. And I'm going to show you how he can say that. Look, he says Satan sin from the beginning. He says, watch this for this purpose. The son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of of the devil. And the reason why he used that word might is because some of us still let Satan work in us. Even though Jesus came and did what he did. Jesus came and gave us a clean slate. When he died for our sins, that was saying, I'm, boy, I'm giving you a new life. You no longer have to pay for that, but I'm giving you an opportunity. He said, I'm going to send you the comforter to help you. This is how you start this new journey, right? Because what he's saying is you used to sin un um, comfortably all the time. Man, because I know, boy, fornication wasn't a sin to me. It was something that made me feel good until I learned the better, right? Even though I knew it was wrong, what I'm saying is I didn't see it like, I wasn't doing it like, oh, man, I shouldn't be. No, I was like, no. Nah. Where you at? Can I come over? Like that. Because you know what you like or what you're trying to do, right? So he says, this is the purpose of Jesus being made manifest, that he might destroy the works of Satan. This is why we can't get caught up in that doctrine where Jesus paid it all in the sense of we ain't got to do nothing. No, he did pay it all. He paid it all for you to start over. He paid it all so you can get the victory. This is why he says, verse uh, 9 says, whosoever is born of God. See, Jesus told us. More than not at this, you must be born again. A lot of us think we've been born again, but we haven't. And I'm going to prove to you how you have not been. It says, because who he so, whosoever is born of God do it not commit sin. Same thing. It's talking about right here. He can't continue in sin. That's what he meant. He ain't sinful. He can't continue in sin. So if you are born of God, you can't continue in sin. Why? Because here it is. For his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In other words, anybody born of God, that sin gonna bother them. They gonna stop. They don't want. They gonna know. Not saying that it's not going to happen, right? You might do because sometimes you might do something you didn't realize exactly what you did. Like, oh man, I can't do that no more. Anybody ever did something and then when you thought about what you did, you felt bad and you prayed and repented. Because in your mind, you're like, did I just do that? God, what did I? Oh, I shouldn't have done that. It could have been some light, but you know it was in, it was in error. And you pray, God, forgive me. Don't, I don't want to do that again. Or whatever it is, you could be, you, your problem could have been having an attitude. And you, it might have been a situation where you got off on somebody. But after, right after that, you feel real bad. What did I just do? Man, I shouldn't have done that. God, please forgive me. Help me overcome that. This is the and, it, and it, it allows you to become a new person because God is saying when my seed is in you, you don't continue in sin. That's the truth. You don't continue in sin. And let's see. OK, I got some uh, uh, a few minutes. I want to get somewhere else too, right quick. Hold on. Let me go to Galatians. Watch this, y'all. Verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. This is what I want to get to. He ten, he's saying this is the truth of everything. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. But I want to show verse 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. Why did I point that out? Because we let Satan deceive us so much that we could do those fleshly things and get away with it. 
as if God ain't appointed us to be a new individual. When you sow, when you do things to the flesh, guess what? It's going to reap through the flesh, and it's eventually going to corrupt you. You're going to have corruption. And that's usually those things, because I'm going to tell y'all, all it takes for you to ignore God a couple times to do what you want to do, and it starts to build. And what I mean by that is, you know God told you to do certain things. You're like, no, nah, I ain't doing it. You please your flesh. Then guess what? You're going to eventually do it again. And then all of a sudden, now you got a whole array of things that you're doing pleasing the flesh. That's not of God because you ain't even sensitive to the word, to his spirit anymore. And it's going to destroy you. This is why when the Bible say not to grieve the Holy Spirit. You should sow to the spirit. Look what it says. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. Everything that the word Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are what spirit. In life. So when Jesus speaks to us and he's telling us to do something, these are spiritual things. When I tell you to hold your tongue, that's spiritual. You so into that. When I tell you to be good to people, that's spiritual. You so into that. When I tell you to forgive, listen, when I tell you to forgive your brothers and your sisters, 70 times 7. You ain't going to even reach that number. But you forgive. You so into that. Amen. You so into being good. You so into when it's time to do something for God. Y'all, because God judges us a lot, too. Because I'm going to tell you what culture has done to us. Culture has allowed us to separate church from God. And this, and this man fought uh, a lot of what Satan has done, like, you know, you got corrupt pastors, you got all these people in the church that's not of God. But here's, the, here's the, the, the blessing about that. God told us from the beginning that that was going to be so. He told us from the beginning that it was going to be heresies here. Amen. He told us from the beginning that it was going to be people in the church that's causing division or that's backbiting and doing all of these things. He told us that from the beginning. But we have allowed culture and Satan to separate church from God right. when there shouldn't be a separation because you learn of God in the church and all the things that you operate and you get fed of God in the church, especially when you ain't feeding yourself at home. But God allows us to separate. So guess what? When we doing things here, because think about it, y'all, the whole makeup, whether it be Western church culture, whatever, the whole makeup started. From God. The whole assembly. God instructed the children of Israel to assemble. To have a holy convocation. That started with church. That's what this is. So why when we assemble and we do things. We take God out of it. And we start looking at people. That's the game changer. Because it's like man, I ain't doing that for that church. Take GFW off of it. Take Pastor James off the top. Watch this. Johnny, you still my brother in Christ. Even if Pastor James ain't the pastor. Or GFW ain't on the building. So should I not want to serve you? Tony, even if you take away the structure, you still my, should I not want to serve you? Why is it I ain't doing this for that church? Well, no. The benefit of this is my brothers and sisters. Right? This is why he say this. And let us not be weary and well doing. God's smarter than us. He knew all of us was going to get tired of doing good stuff because people weren't going to appreciate it. He already knew. This is why he got to tell us to don't get weary, don't get tired, don't get frustrated when you're doing good. Because I already know it's going to be some folks in there that's going to take advantage of you. I already know it's going to be some people that ain't doing what you're doing. It's going to be some folks every time it's time to do something for the church, you're going to always volunteer, but they waiting to see you raise your hand first. He already know that. But what you got to develop in your mind is I ain't raising my hand trying to beat them. I'm raising my hand because I want to serve my brothers and sisters. Look, we'll 
He said, we're going to reap. This is why he said earlier in the, in the chapter, don't, I'm not mocked. For whatever man soweth, he shall reap. I don't care what them folks not appreciating of you, Tony. As long as you're doing good, I got you. That's what God is saying. Take, and notice, notice he ain't say long as you're doing good at GFW. Long as you're doing good for Pastor Jen. No, I don't care where you at. I don't care which one of your brothers and sisters, and this is why this is happening, y'all. Look, he says, we will would, we would reap if we faint not. And verse 10, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are, who are the household of faith. <sighs> so these are these people, y'all. These, when I say these people, I'm sorry. Y'all ain't these people. It's family, right? It's brothers and sisters in Christ. And I'm going to tell y'all how I view things. I was talking even, I take uh, like my brothers and sisters here, and I take my blood brothers and sisters, right? Uh, I'm talking about kin of the flesh, like Boo, Troy. They are the faith. And, and it's bigger than GFW. I ain't talking about just GFW. I'm talking about Christ, period. So when I've raised, like, every, this is what we do. We're going to do good for our brothers and sisters anyway. Amen. Like, we be looking out for family anyway. But the Bible say who your family is, the household of faith. Notice, house, anytime you see the word household, you think about family, right? What I'm saying is when I think about family, so now when I think about my sister and, my, and Troy, not only are they my fleshly blood brothers and sisters, they my spiritual blood brothers and sisters. So now, and I can say this even in, in confidence, even when my mama's standing here, I jump for boo faster than I will for one of my brothers that ain't part of the faith. You know why? Because she, my double sister. Like, it's bigger than, now it's like, not that I won't do, look out for my other brothers and sisters, but I'm saying when I consider Boa, when I consider Troy, it's different. Because God said, so not even just them, Johnny, Tan, anybody, that's that, like, when you view it the way God wants you to view it, because it's like this. Uh, us in here, we supposed to have a come and go. Now I know everybody ain't on the same page, Amen. right? And the same, and the same go, go for my mama. Like she not only my mama fleshly, but she my mama in Christ too. Like that's a difference. That's a game changer, right? So it's like, man, not only this. If 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 my sister wasn't in the faith, I'd look out for her. But her being in the faith and she's still my sister, oh, it's a game. It's a different level. You see what I'm saying? So even us, I'm saying is, it's like a lot of times we haven't got to the mindset where we have categorized the people of the faith as family. And it prevents us from doing all we can do for one another. God said, therefore, if you have, when you have the opportunity. And then what I love about it, he said, do good unto all men. So in other words, he was saying, I ain't just talking about the church people. But I'm telling you to be good to all men. But he said, especially. In other words, he put emphasis on the people that's in the household of faith with you. Amen. So, you know, it's like this. If my, if my sister called me or if my, my fleshly brother or cousin who I ain't talked to in a month called me and say they stranded on the highway, I'm going to get up. My brother in the faith called me, they're going to have to wait till in the morning. This is how, no, this is how mentally we operate. Amen. And that's an error when it comes to God. And God is trying to get us. This is why he said you have to renew your mind. You got to renew the way you think. So when I got uh, nieces and nephews in the faith, I look out for them. Because in my mind, I'm saying, yeah, like, you know, because family, you know, oh, well, you know, you, yeah, I ain't talked to my Ken or blood niece in a little while. I'm just hypothetically speaking. But I see my spiritual niece every week. And then you it's probably you probably gonna have a closer relationship with your spiritual uh niece than you did your blood because y'all ain't y'all ain't even on the same page. Y'all don't even see stuff the same. And don't make that make you feel guilty because God already instructed us on how we should operate. 
And he also said, be good to everybody, but especially, especially, and y'all listen, I know church people are vexing, but our church people ain't God people. But God is telling you, I ain't asked that of you, though. I do the sorting out. That's why he said, let the wheat and the tares grow together into the harvest. Right? I don't need you focusing on who of me and who against me. Because you might have somebody that's against me right now, but before they go to sleep, they're going to be of me. I'll do the picking out. All I need you to do is focus on the task at hand. Be good to everybody. Especially. Especially those that say they're your brothers and sisters in Christ. That's how we become new, y'all, because a lot of times we can't. Be all we can be because we're still stuck in that fleshly mindset of how we do things according to the world. When God is saying, change your mindset. This is why even when it, all my brothers and sisters are, like I have relationships with people and I look at like the Mikhail's and stuff like, Mikhail is my real sister. All y'all like, Juanice is my real sister. I'm saying that in the way of God expecting us to be. And don't get me wrong, even in your, your uh, blood-related family or your fleshly-related family, you have relationships closer than others. So don't think you're in error when that happens. Because a lot of people are like, oh, man, man, because listen, I'm going to tell y'all, like even with all my brothers, uh, I'm Trump been with me practically his whole life. And it's, a, it's different. But I remember me and my older brother, like, we had a relationship that me and my older brother got a different relationship from me and my other brothers. We just have a, this thing we know. Like, now we know what it is between us. You know what I'm saying? I don't have that with my other brothers. Not, and I have relationships with my other brothers, they, but it's different. And my older brother, me and his relationship is different. When we see, we talk, we know, sometimes we ain't got to say nothing. Because I already know it's been established since we were small kids. So even in the faith, y'all say that because even in the faith, you might be closer to some brothers or sisters than you are to others. But that don't mean y'all not our family. But when you talk about your family or those that's in the faith, man, God say do good to them. And you got to regenerate, you got to redirect your mind in order to, to really carry out those things. And that's why even when nobody else ain't doing that, when you had that mindset, but this is my responsibility because this is my family, you do it. You do it. I know I'm out of time. What time is it? 11 or 2? Okay, come on, y'all. Well, let, let, come, let's pray. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Father God, we just want to say thank you for giving us another opportunity to study a portion of your word, Father. I pray there was nothing that was said that came from me, but it came strictly from you and your Holy Spirit, praying that you continue to lead us and guide us into all truth, Father. Watch over us, protect us, and keep us safe. And I pray that your spirit continue to be with us, Father God, and everything we do on today be pleasing in your sight. We ask all this in your Holy Son, Jesus' name. Amen.